All right, Dusty, let's talk about uh, Landry Jones. The XFL announces Landry Jones is their first signee, but no team designation yet. Uh, what does that say about the XFL if Jones is number one? Well, I'll tell you, it's about what we expect, right? I mean, these aren't going to be superstars in the National Football League. But I like it for Landry Jones. Five years in the NFL, fourth Pittsburgh, one with Jacksonville. And the unique thing about the XFL, they can actually pay up to $200,000 a year. Not a bad way to make a living and still play quarterback, especially if it could be for your old college coach. So what does it say about the XFL if Landry's number one? I think it tells what we know. It's a pretty good league that's going to have some pretty good football players in it. Yeah, I talked to Bob about it the other night. It's just crazy that they won't know what team he's going to play for. But let's go to uh, OSU. All right, Mike Gundy saying something interesting nationally. Thoughts on Gundy saying that his 2011 team, the, the one with Whedon and Blackman, that OSU would have beaten LSU if they'd had a shot at them in the BCS championship game that LSU lost to Alabama in. Your thoughts? I actually agree with this, Dean. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I agree. I mean, we all know what happened that Friday night in Ames. Uh, the tragedy the night before, the missed field goal that night. It blocked or helped keep this Oklahoma State team from trying to have an opportunity to be an LSU team. And I agree with Mike Gundy. I think they would have. This was the number two scoring offense in college football that year. They had Brandon Whedon, Justin Blackman. that were absolutely scorching people. But what I loved about this football team, the offensive line, Dean, they were road graders. They moved people off the football. Joseph Randall ran the ball extremely well. They were a balanced offense and defensively 44 takeaways, number one in college football. And I know this LSU defense was great, number two in scoring defense. They took the ball away quite a bit too. But the thing about their offense, they're so one-dimensional. They were 106 in college football and throwing the ball. So if I'm Oklahoma State in that game, I'm going to load the box up. I'm going to force them to try to throw the football. And if they want to play man-to-man -man when they're on defense against my receivers and that quarterback, good luck. I agree with Mike Gundy. I wish we would have had a chance to see it play on the field. But as it relates to this hypothetical, I think OSU would have won a national championship had they played LSU. Gundy's point was that LSU played a defense where they would have had to go strictly man-to-man -man and that they couldn't match up with OSU. Yeah. Uh, LSU would have had a chance to change that defense, but if that's not their normal defense, then they wouldn't have been as good. So who knows? Let's go to Oklahoma. Do you anticipate Spencer Radler, the uh, five-star, all-everything quarterback, do you expect him to be announced as a redshirt, but minimally playing in at least four games, uh, you know, with that redshirt rule? What, what are your thoughts? I'm not sure yet. I mean, Spencer Rattler's throwing the football unbelievably well right now. He has an elite arm. Uh, you know, arms like the last two number one over picks and Heisman Trophy winners had. So uh, I don't know exactly what the plan Lincoln Riley has in store for Spencer Rattler. Based off of skill set throwing the football, I mean, he could play this year. Uh, but where is he developmental wise? in his mind how much has he grasped the offense remember he didn't get here in january he got here this summer so wouldn't shock me if he redshirted but also wouldn't shock me if we see this guy on the field and i think that a situation like spencer this four games that you can play and still redshirt i think it really sets up a unique opportunity to see if the young man is ready to, to continue to play him and potentially earn a spot as a backup and if not you let him play the four games it's some meaningful reps learns a little bit on the fly and and then all of a sudden you can still redshirt him and have four years of eligibility it, remaining in his career. If you do that, you probably lose Mordecai. Then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. Uh, and also, um, you know, having played that position, I know how far back you, you are when you miss spring practice as a true freshman. And I know the arms there. I've, I've seen it. We saw practice the other day. But, man, that is saying a lot to try to come in as a true freshman, not go through spring ball and beat out – um, a guy like Jalen Hurts. It's a good problem to have. Another one with the Sooners. Do you expect redshirt freshman Jalen well, Redman? I, I, well, I don't think, I don't think that he's going to beat out Jalen Hurts. I, you say I it Jaylen as Hurts an injury or, I think or that, yeah. you know, Spencer Rattler. It, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, moving on to uh, Jalen Redman, the redshirt freshman. Do you expect him to start at uh, Jack, the linebacker? And, and how good do you think he will be this year? 
Well, Jalen Redmond's had a unique career. He's been had all kinds of injury issues, health issues, so we haven't seen much of him on the field. I actually think he'll put his hand down. I think he'll play in this defense, uh, more of a hand down defensive end. I think it's possible at times they stand him up, but uh, based off what I've seen and heard, I think they want to put his hand in the ground. And I do think he's going to have a chance to be an impactful player this season. Uh, I think he possesses the best pure pass rush ability along that defensive front when you're talking working your hands and your hips simultaneously and being able to beat offensive linemen with skilled moves. He's got that fluidity in his hips. He's got that ability coming off the football. The biggest thing for Jalen is staying on the field, staying healthy, getting those repetitions and putting himself in a position that he can continue to get better and better. The skill set is there. I just hope that the health is able to stay with him this year. If so, I expect he's going to make some plays for the Sooner defense. But for me, it'll be hand in the ground, not standing up an outside wow. backer. Okay. Fingers crossed on the blood clot issue. We got to give it, uh, we got to go because the newscast is about to begin. Hey, way to go. Talk to you soon.